Are you a brick and mortar business owner that has put your blood, sweat, and tears into creating a storefront that lights you up and serves your clients really well, only to be frustrated that you're the best kept secret in town? If you're not hearing your new clients say, I found you on Google, then you are in the right place. Welcome. My name is Melissa Rose. I'm a mom, a brick and mortar business owner, and your straight shooting visibility coach. I've cracked the SEO code to becoming the top choice on Google in my industry. And now I'm I'm sharing the secrets on this podcast. Get ready for stories, fail-proof strategies, and practical tips to elevate your brick-and-mortar presence to the top choice on Google. Let's get real because we're going to make your business the only option in town. Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Brick and Mortar Visibility. So glad you are here. Thank you so much for choosing to put Brick and Mortar Visibility in your ears and hang out with me for a little bit. Today's episode is going to be a bit juicy in the fact that it might be a little bit longer. However, it is going to be jammed packed with content that all of us, no matter what stage of business we are in, need to consider when we are going to invest in a brick and mortar. Now, some of you have already done this. Some of you have not. Some of you are ready to up-level to your second or third lease, or maybe you're ready to (laughs) buy the property. All these things, no matter where you are, we all have to take a moment and just give us cause to pause with these questions or concerns that I'm going to bring up today. Before we dive into the workshop or the, yeah, today's going to be a workshop. Before we dive into that, I want to make sure that you are being found first on Google and that you are ready to take that investment and up level because you are so packed with people coming in your doors because they found you on Google. And if you are not there, you need to make sure you are optimizing your Google business profile. And if your eyes or ears just glazed over with those words, don't worry, I'm here to help you. Go grab my Google Business Profile Workshop and make sure all the bells and whistles are optimized on your Google Business Profile. Did you know that only like 56% of business owners actually claim their Google Business Profile? And out of that, only 40% do anything with it. That is just mind-blowing to me because, you guys, this is free. This, This ability to set yourself up for success is free. We just have to do the work, and that's where the rubber meets the road. So grab that free Google Business Profile Workshop. It's about 30 minutes long, and then do the work. It takes about 90 minutes. It can take longer um, to do it really, really well. But once it's done, you're like 90% done with it, okay? You can always update it, and that's what my PSA is for you, to go grab an update from your social media and bring it on over to your Google Business Profile. Make sure we do that weekly so that we are always being crawled by Google, showing Google that we are in business and ready for business and to please show our business to people who are looking for our business. All right, we are going to dive in to the topic today, 10 things that you should consider before investing in a brick and mortar business. And when I say brick and mortar business, I mean your business is already flourishing. You are ready to hang a shingle, okay? You're ready to maybe get that first place where you can have people come into your storefront. Uh, Maybe you've been subletting from somebody and now you're ready to go off on your own. Maybe you're ready to up level and get a bigger space. All those things. Here is why we need to do this. (laughs) It is so exciting to get a storefront. It is so exciting. It's like we walk a little taller It's like we're really in business. Now, I say this because for those of you that don't know my story, I had my business 10 years out of my home, literally. I, Dave Ramsey, I was in my basement teaching dance classes for 10 years out of my home. I had about 120 students coming into my house weekly for dance lessons, and I did it all. I did did the teaching, the admin, all the things, and then life happened, and I kept Life happened in the fact that I became a single mom with five kids, 11 and under. So I needed to figure out how to make this work. So I did everything I could to keep my business lean and lean and mean, right? But then it got to a point where I was like, I am only going to make so much money if I keep it this way. And I wanted to grow and scale. And there was a lot of thought, a lot of prayer, and and tears before opening that first storefront. 
and things to consider. So I come to you from that place of, it, I did not just jump into it, but once I opened that storefront with doors and a parking lot and my space, it was a new level, new devil, as my mentor would say. So good things, but lots to consider. So number one, here we go. Location, location, location. I want you to think about how far away are you to your business. I want you to think about your dream clients and how far are they coming? How far will they come? I want you to think about parking. I want you to think about distractions, meaning are you in a strip mall area and not, uh, yeah, you have, a, you have a brick and mortar, but it's kind of hard to find signage, all right? Things to think about there. We have a bay with ample parking, great visibility. It's literally a mile from my house. Like it is dream. It is dream. And that's why I'm there. But some of you may want to go, maybe your living, maybe your location is out of the city. You want to go more into the city or more out of the suburb, whatever it is. But think about that and think about the signage and what can, what foot traffic are you going to get? Will you get foot traffic? Is your a business that really gets foot traffic. Like if you're a boutique, um, meaning like clothing boutique, you want to be around places where people will go, right? You know this. Uh, if you're a service-based business like me, people will drive to you because they're looking for that specific service. So think about your industry and really consider the location. I have to giggle because I talk about the parking here and that is such a legit thing, parking. If it's hard for people to park, they're not going to go to you. They're going to just go further down the road because it's easier, especially if they have to, have to get out and maybe unload kids or whatever. I That's that's my business. Um, my lawyer, <laughs> when I was going through my divorce, his parking was terrible. I hated going there, not only because it was a lawyer, but I just hated going there because the parking, the parking was a legit thing. So I know that sounds silly, but think about that and think about... Um, uh, signage and visibility with the foot traffic if that is your industry. Okay, our number two is length of the lease, the pros and cons. Now, if you don't know, uh, renting commercial space is the Wild West. Like with residential homes, there's a market value. With commercial, <laughs> you, you have a lot of leeway here, all right? And I highly recommend working with a realtor or a broker and getting the most you can because everything is negotiable, everything. So I want you to think about your business. Is this a level up in the fact that you see yourself growing even more? Or is this a forever home? Are you in a space in your life where you're hoping to retire soon? So maybe you're going to have it for five years and then you hope to sell it. So do you have somebody in mind or is this totally open-ended? You got to think about your life, your rhythm of life, your, um, your business as well. So the pros and cons, when you have a longer lease, you are usually able to negotiate a lower rent. So think about where you are in life. If you want to sign that three, five, 10 year lease, go for it. Go for it if you are confident that this is what you want to do. But we can't predict the future. One of the, I don't want to say it's a mistake, but the thing that I did is I signed a five-year lease in the beginning because I had been doing my business for 10 years out of my house. So I knew if for myself, I would be doing this industry for forever. I, I mean, that's what I do. I signed a five-year lease and my lease started in January of 2020. And we all know what happened a few months later. So thankfully, there was uh, support through the government and everything so that my landlord could get paid and so that we could float for a bit. However, you know, a couple years after everything is settled down, we're still building back up. So Yes, I'm in a, I was in a five-year lease. Yes, it was stressful because you can't predict the future. And that is what we're going to talk about here, the length, the, you know, thinking about that, those pros and cons of a longer lease. 
The next point I want to talk about is whether you do a build out or not. So for what you, for those of you that may not know, a build out is when you actually physically have to tear down walls, build walls, <laughs> whatever it is. You know, I had to put in mirrors and bars and floors and all the things. And sometimes you, your landlord can cover that, uh, or they'll compensate that by giving rent free for a certain amount of months. Now keep in mind, this is all negotiable. You can negotiate, well, the build out is going to take three months or six months. Help me out with rent here so I can get this to par so that way I can um, bring my clients in here. So when you don't have a building or a place to bring your clients, you're, you're out of income. So you can negotiate that. So what can they cover? Will they cover it? How much will they cover? You, it's all negotiable. So what happens, though, is sometimes there's a delay. So let's say you get that three months rent free. Your contractor says, yeah, I can get that done. But then life happens. We had something where it was a zoning problem. Our building was zoned as a warehouse. And the city was like, no, you can't put a dance studio there. And I was like, what? Because I already signed the lease. So that was an issue with my realtor and my landlord and my contractor. So my contractor was ready to go August 1st when we signed the lease. But he couldn't do any work for like almost 60 days because we had to wait for the city to have a meeting to get my warehouse zoned that I could put my studio in it. So then I literally, I was expecting to have classes out of the studio in September because my contractor said, it. yeah, we can get this done in 30 days. So I signed my lease August 1st, thinking I would be able to go by September 10th because that's when classes started. Nope. I could not move into my facility until January. So I had three months rent free, but wasn't able to actually hold classes in my new facility until January. That was not fun because, of course, I, you know, had been marketing and building up my numbers and then I was still having to teach classes out of the house and my neighbors did not like me. It was really, really busy and um, not fun. So those, that's a real life story. <laughs> you plan for the best, but um, you hope for the best, but plan for the worst. And, and um, you know, you just, you do what you can. You have to think about that. So the build out there. Number four needs versus want, please stay in the budget. It is so easy to get tempted to, oh yeah, let's just, might might as well do that. We're building out or might as well do it now because the wall is down. So let's put that in there or whatever, but please, please stay in your budget. You need to have a dashboard. When I say a dashboard, it is a spreadsheet telling you exactly how many students or clients you need, how much they need to be paying you, how much your overhead costs are be, and breaking everything down and knowing what levers to pull and MacGyver, (laughs) I use that word, um, so that you are staying within budget and still profitable because there's nothing worse than running a business and you're not making money. So please go through everything and is it a need or a want? Is it a right now? Is it a have to? Be as lean as you can because your future self will thank you because then you will be able to breathe and sleep at night and enjoy your business. And that's the whole reason we do this. We do our business because we love what we do and we make a profit at it so that we can give generously to our families, our community, and our clients. Number five, number five, we are going to talk about utilities and CAM charges. So what are CAMs? CAMs are common area maintenance all right? And they affect your overhead. So they can, uh, common area maintenance. Do you own the parking lot or is the landlord going to take care of all the parking lot needs, meaning the shoveling, the snow plowing, the, um, resurfacing, um, gardening gardens if there's gardens and trees or you know if there's a windstorm and a tree branch blows down you know are they going to take care of that also the utilities and this goes back to your dashboard knowing what you have to work with because the utilities of insurance and garbage and um, insurance and heat uh, and air conditioning and uh, internet all of those costs into your overhead so I have a gauge that I do this so uh, price line or price guide that I do 
for my business, okay? And it's very similar to your home. So your rent should not be more than 25% of your income, okay? So as a business, I'm sure we ebb and flow a little bit with our monthly income, but every month and year that we're in business, we have more data. We have more feedback to know average, what do we make um, a month? And out of that, 25% should be rent, okay? No more than that. And then overall, 30% for your overhead. So that that's what I was talking about with your cams and your utilities. All of that and your rent should be, that's part of overhead. And no more than 30% of your gross income should be delegated to those charges, okay? So that goes back to that dashboard of knowing exactly how much everything is, and then average that out monthly because you're going to have some larger months and slower months and knowing if you can truly, truly afford that and not break even, but make sure you have a profit built in so that you can enjoy your business. Okay, we're going to take a break, (laughs) mental break from all the stuff with rent and getting that storefront. I don't want to scare you because it's really cool when you are able to do this. And like I said, at the top of the episode, you just walk a little taller. You truly do. I remember that feeling of putting my graphics on my window and I was just so, so excited about what was going to be happening and coming into that space. But as a business owner, sometimes it can feel pretty darn lonely and it would really be nice to bounce off some ideas, get some feedback, Uh, I have a question. Can I quick talk to you about this? And that is why I have created my Level Up Mastermind. This is a small group, super small, 10 and under, of business owners coming together monthly to connect, to encourage, to empower, and to learn from each other. So I come in every month with a 15-minute training where I just share with you um, a training that is pertinent to everybody in the group whether it's about team or getting that brick and mortar or uh, pricing or whatever it is that we start out with. And then we go around the room one at a time and you bring up your concern, uh, question what you're thinking about, and we mastermind around that. I love masterminds because we can learn from each other and we can up level and we have that accountability. So level up is a three month commitment and then you can continue your membership monthly. With that three-month commitment, you get a 90-minute mastermind once a month. It's on the third Tuesday of the month from 1 p.m. Central Time to 2.30 Central Time. It is $297 for three months. That's it, $297 for three months. And that's your commitment. And then after that, you guys, you can choose to stay on monthly and pay $88 a month. So it's very reasonable. It's super packed with value and it helps you level up to your next level. Did you know that the work that we do today in our business doesn't truly manifest for 60 to 90 days? This is why I love the three-month commitment because you are taking the action right now to level up your business 60 to 90 days from now. And guess what that is, y'all? As of right now, that is January 2025. And what would it be like to have something better going on in your business, whether it's systems or maybe a team member or maybe um, revenue, or maybe it's working on those SEO generated blogs and really getting those dialed in and happening consistently. Whatever it is, let's do it. Come on over to MsMelissaRose.com and learn all about it. You can click the work with me tab and under there's level up. Otherwise, of course, click the link in the bio. Okay, I told you this episode was going to be juicy, and here we are. Okay, so I have 10 little things to think about, little, and they're not little, but they're things, questions, concerns that you need to think about before jumping into that brick and mortar, okay, at any level. And number six, we're going to go a little bit deeper on these costs. Don't forget the extras, all right? You have, like I alluded to, we have our rent and utilities, but then you have insurance. And what happens if you have a month where you're you're late and you have then late fees and then interest on those late payments? It may seem small, but they all add up. So please, please, (laughs) and I'm saying this from experience because it's it's it sucks when 
uh, the utilities were way more than you thought they were going to be. And you're caught off guard for that month. And it's just, it kind of domino effects into future months if you do not have things priced properly. So make sure you have a dashboard. And if you don't, go to MsMelissaRose.com and click my tools and talk to uh, Talos Consulting and he will take care of you and build that dashboard for you to make sure it is best and um, super customized to your business so that you can be profitable and sleep at night. All right. Number seven, your business goals. Are you, are you getting this property to scale or to stay? Uh, Is this your forever home or is this a stepping stone? I really want you to look at you personally. I don't like the phrase, if you're not growing, you're dying. I don't like that because there comes a time when you have a a spot in your business and you're like, this feels good. This feels really good. Yeah. There's always things you can add or make bigger. Um, of course you want to grow so that you're always being profitable, but you don't need to maybe, maybe you don't need to add that extra program or that extra, um, doctor to your office or that extra like space. It's okay to have a business that feels good that you can go home and, and step away from and truly be present with your family, all right? But I want you to think, for this space, is this a stepping stone? So maybe it makes sense. You know what? Let's just do a two-year lease or maybe a five-year lease. Or is this a forever place? You know what? I, I see myself doing this for a while. I have plans in place for a team. So that way, if I need to step out or can step out, somebody else can run it. So think about that, okay? Number eight, the landlord reputation. This is legit, I remember looking at properties and I, there was a lot of vacant spot in the strip mall area and it was super close to my home. So it was about, you know, two miles away. It's about where I wanted to be for as far as my space, my commercial space. And it happened to be a brewery next door. So of course I'm there (laughs) having a beer and I talked to the owner and how's, how are things? And, um, I see there's a lot of space here for rent. And he goes, and he just said, don't you dare. He goes, this landlord is awful to work with. That's why there are so many vacant spots. spots. And he just went in and, and he didn't get into the nitty gritty, but he just was highly like, don't you dare. Don't do that to yourself. Um, nobody wants to work with this guy. And we're stuck here for another year and we're getting out as soon as we can. So it is okay to go and get um, uh, ask people, ask the neighbors, how's the guy, how's the landlord to work with? Um, I have a great relationship with my landlord, super great relationship and very transparent and just saying, Hey, heads up. I'm thinking about this. What do you think about this? And it matters. Okay. Because you are in a relationship (laughs) for a while and it needs to work for both of you. And you know that. So the more, um, honest and transparent you can be about your goals. They want you to be there. They, it's in their best interest to have you as a, as a client. All right. So make it work for both of you, which brings me to number nine. Maybe you have a space that's just a bit too big right now, but you could grow into it. So you can do what I did. And I asked about subletting. Can I have another renter in here that pays me rent? And then therefore you get paid. And He was totally fine with it as long as he knew about it, all right? So there are ways to get into that space that mm, it's just a little bit too big, but goodness, I have a a business friend that just needs like, maybe she needs 800 square feet or that, you know, they need a little space or maybe they want a little office space or they want a, a space that they can come in to do their office work and then they're out and about in the community, like meeting with clients. Be creative, Okay. And know that that is an option and, you know, it can be an option whether your landlord is open to it or not. That is what, something that needs to be transparent with them so that you can make sure you're making the best choice. And number 10, we did it. <laughs> I knew this was going to be juicy. Number 10, trust your gut. You know, you know if it feels right. You know if you're stepping into the space, if you can envision it. I went and looked at like five different places. And when I got to my space, I was like, this is right. This is right. And I'm not going to say it was easy. This whole six years that I've been there, yes, there's been some ebbs and flows and ups and downs. But I walk into my space every time and go, I love my space. I love my space. 
And when we are up leveling, it is natural to be, feel scary. It is natural to be second guessing. It is natural to go, oh, am I doing all the right things? And I just gave you a whole bucket list of things to think about before you make that investment. But when you get quiet with yourself and when you maybe sit in the space or you drive around the space and you're quiet, listen to your gut because your gut is telling you. And, and you've got to trust your gut. You know that. You are a business owner. You would trust your gut on a lot of things. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you do if you're anything like me because a lot of it is let go, let God, and we just do the work, right? So I hope this episode was helpful. I hope it was, gave you cause to pause and just made you think about next steps. Maybe you have a lease that's ending in the next 90 days or maybe a year, and you're like, okay, what can we do? What, what should we do? Um, it is never too early to think about the next step. What is it for you? Maybe it's staying there. Maybe it's downsizing. Maybe it's going up, whatever it is. It's got to be right for you and making sure that all the buckets are properly accounted for in your dashboard so that you're running a profitable business in the right location so that people can find you and you're the only option in town. And when you walk in your doors, not only do you feel like wow and so proud of yourself but when your clients come in they go wow and they know they found the best option in town for them all right you guys have a great week well you will see you here same time same place next week peace bye-bye